one of the most common questions asked about the Bible is, <clears throat> which one is right? Which Bible should I read? Which is the best translation of the Bible? And there's really not a good answer to that. And I'll tell you why. Um, first of all, the Bible is written mostly in three languages. Well, really mostly two languages. Primarily it is written, the Old Testament is written in Hebrew originally. And the New Testament was originally written primarily in a form of Greek that was common in the first century. In fact, that's the name of it, what they call it, Koine Greek just means common Greek. The average person spoke it. It wasn't the aristocracy, the, the, you know, the rich people that spoke this language. It was everybody. And a lot of people in first century Jerusalem uh, spoke this Greek as well as the next most prominent language in the Bible, which is Aram Aramaic, which is kind of a a later form of Hebrew, and that is most likely the language that Jesus and Peter and James and John and all the other apostles spoke. And then there's a smattering of words here and there that are from uh, Babylonian and Assyrian and that kind of thing. Um, but by and large, it's, it's Greek and Hebrew and a little bit of Aramaic. Um, and so the Bible has to be translated into English for us to read it. In fact, it has to be translated, New Testament has to be translated for anybody to read it, because even somebody that speaks modern day Greek couldn't read it. It's not the same language. Um, the alphabet is pretty much the same, and there's a few words that are the same, but there are some words that are, are very different. The pronunciation is extremely different, the letters don't sound the same, and also uh, sentence structure, syntax, order of words, that kind of thing um, is different in modern day Greek. Um, there are a few people that could read the Old Testament without translation. They could read Hebrew. Um, and most of them are gonna be either scholars or uh, practicing Orthodox Jews. Um, so it's, it's a very small section of the uh, population. And you can even read the Old Testament in Greek. Uh, same Koine Greek. It was, the, the Old Testament was translated from Hebrew, Hebrew to Koine Greek before the time of Jesus. And in fact, when Jesus or uh, some of the other New Testament writers uh, quote the Old Testament, most often, not always, but most often, they're quoting the Septuagint, the Greek version that had been translated from the Hebrew. So anyway, for most people, you're going to have to read from a translation. You're not going to be able to read the Bible in the original languages. So what translation is the best? Well it really kind of depends. There are translations that are more literal, you know, word for word. This means this, this word means this, this word means this. But when you do that sort of translation, you get some funny things happen. Um, you, there are things that are idioms that don't mean the same in one language as they do another. Um, for example, in English, if I say somebody is cool as a cucumber, 
you know what that means. But if you translate that into, say, French, the French guy is going to go, you know, what do cold vegetables have to do with this person? That doesn't make any sense. Um, there are other things that the grammatical structure is different. Sometimes you have to add a word into it, into a sentence, to make it make sense in English, because, like, there are a few Greek sentences that don't have verbs, and that doesn't make sense in English. you got to have a verb in every English uh, sentence, at least if you want the sentence to make sense to where everybody can understand it. So there are there are, are Bibles, there are translations of the Bible that are that try to be as literal word for word as they can, but you know, making allowances for the changes in the grammar and that sort of thing. There are others that are more translating thought for thought, just trying to convey the ideas. And then there are ones that are somewhere in between that try to be as literal as possible, but still make sure that they really convey the meaning and are in a way that's easy to read. And so depending on your reading level and your interest in doing really in-depth Bible study that approaches scholarly work, um, you know, if, if you really want to get down to as little as possible, you might want to do something like the NASB, the New American Standard Bible. And this is the Bible that I primarily read from, but I have a bunch of others. Um, there is one that's still pretty literal, but not quite as, as stiff reading uh, as the ESV, the English Standard Version. Um, and then you get into some versions that are kind of middle of the road. The NIV does a good job of conveying the meaning and trying to be literal, but making it really easy to read. Um, there's also the CSB, which is Christian Standard Bible. It used to be the H uh, CSB, the Holman Christian Standard Bible, and they, they changed the name of it in the last edition. And then you have things that are more... They're just conveying the ideas, but they're not as really concerned about the word-for-word -word thing. Um, so maybe just, you know, less literal than the NIV, the New International Version, you would have the New Living Translation, which previous editions of it weren't even called translations. They were called, it was called the New Living Version because it's not really even a translation. It's more of a paraphrase. Um... And then even less literal than the New Living Translation is the a version called the Message. And the New Living Translation and the Message are good for devotional reading, but they are not good for Bible study. Um, you're going to lose a lot of the deep theology with versions like that. So, you know, uh, the, the New Living Translation might be a good starting version for a young kid, maybe 12 years old. Um, and I forgot to mention the King James Version. The King James Version is a pretty good literal translation, but it's written in 
Elizabethan English, and we don't speak that way anymore. And so not only does it have a lot of these and nows, but it also has some words that we still use in English today, but the words have changed. In fact, for some of them, the, the meaning is absolutely opposite. So it can be, you can get the wrong idea sometimes because you, uh, you think you know what a word means and it doesn't mean that. Uh, in fact, there's a, a guy that has a whole YouTube channel on based on the King James and the differences between it and modern versions and he calls these words that we think we know what they mean uh, false friends. The guy's name is Mark Ward. It's a great channel. If you're a Bible nerd, I highly recommend you checking it out. If you're not a Bible nerd, you might find it a little bit boring. Anyway, so it which is the best Bible really is going to depend on what you're doing. If you're doing deep theological study and you can't read the Greek or the Hebrew, you probably want either the NASB or the ESV, or maybe both. It's, it's oftentimes good to check multiple uh, translations of the Bible. If you're wanting something for everyday reading, the NIV, the CSB, something like that. If you're just wanting light devotional reading that will inspire you, but you're not using it for Bible study, you're not getting theology from it, then the message or the NLT, uh, yeah, the New Living Translation, are probably okay. I want to tell you about four Bibles that you need to stay away from. Two of them are very modern versions. Uh, as far as I know, they both came out within the last five years. Uh, one of them is called the, the Passion Translation. Um, this isn't just a bad translation. It is a dangerous translation because it actually changes the theology of what the Bible says in, in a few places. And I don't have time to get into this that in this video. I might one in the future if I ever if God ever leads me to do that, but they've changed some of the scriptures. It's not the same. And because it's in modern language, it's very easy to read. It has become very popular, and you can get it at most Christian bookstores and christianbook.com. Um, but a couple of the Bible apps and websites that have multiple translations, versions of the Bible, uh, put it up for a little while, but they have since removed it because it is it's just theologically incorrect. Um, there's another modern Bible that has come out fairly recently, and it's called the Mirror Bible. And I will be honest, I have not had as much of a chance to check this one out as I would like to. Um, I've done a little more research on the Passion Translation, so I know what I'm talking about. My information on the Mirror Bible comes from another YouTuber, a guy by the name of Mike Winger, who is awesome. Um, he does theology, but he makes it, he does theology in a way that is accessible to your average person. He takes the big words and concepts and, and simplifies them, does a lot of research for you and tells you, all right, here's the bottom line. Good guy, good show, you need to check him out. Anyway. Mike Winger did something on the Mirror Bible, and basically it, the idea was that it's even worse than the Passion Translation, so you definitely need to stay away from those. The other two are sectarian denominational Bibles, and in my opinion, they are two denominations that are not really even Christian. That is the... Uh, New World Translation, which is put out 
by the Watchtower Bible Society. And if you're not familiar with the Watchtower Bible Society, they are uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. And I have a copy of this myself for study purposes. And I have checked this Bible out. And not in every place, you can still you can still find it in there. But in several places, they have changed the Bible and removed the deity of Christ. They don't believe that Jesus is God. They believe that Jesus is actually uh, the Archangel Michael, I believe. I could be wrong. It might be Gabriel, but I think it's Michael. And so, like, John 1.1 1, 1 in the New World Translation doesn't say, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God, is what they have, instead of saying the Word was God. Um, that changes things completely, and is contradictory to the rest of the Bible that teaches that there is only one God. Um, but yet, even in their translation, if you look hard enough, you can find uh, that Jesus is God. You can find the Trinity, a single God who exists in three persons that we really can't understand. Uh, the final version I want to talk about is one that is uh, used by Latter-day Saints or Mormons or LDS. And um, it looks like the King James Version because it pretty much is with a few changes. And they, they call it the Joseph Smith Translation, but if you ask most Mormons, they will say that they use the King James Translation. If you buy what is called a quad, um, which is a Book of Mormon scriptures that includes the King James Version, uh, the Book of Mormon, and two other books that they use called the Doctrine of, and Covenants and the Pearl of Great Price. Anyway, this, it, it's more like Joseph Smith changed and added to the King James Version. So the Joseph Smith translation, or the Mormon King James Bible, um, changes a lot of things. Um, it changes a passage in Romans uh, that says that God justifies the ungodly, that we can be saved through grace And it, it changes it to say God does not justify the ungodly. It adds the word not in there that is not in the original Greek. And I've checked this. You might ask, well, how do you know that it's in the original Greek? How did you check it? I actually went to a college where I took two years of Koine Greek. And although I can't read it what you would call fluently, I have kept up with it enough that I can check things like that. And I do remember enough from when I was actually taking the classes that I read that. We actually translated that chapter. Um, I can still quote the first verse of John mostly in Greek. And if I have the Greek text in front of me, I can read it out loud, no problem. Um, anyway, it's irrelevant. So he changes the first verse of John to say, uh, well, he changes the part of Romans to have the word not in there when it's not in there. He changes the first verse of John, which we all know says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And I can't quote the Mormon version out off the top of my head, but it basically says something like, in the beginning was the gospel, and the son preached the gospel, and the son was with God, 
completely rewrites it, adds things that are not there, changes the meaning of it completely, removes the deity of Christ. Uh, for example, the original Greek says nothing about Jesus being the Son in that verse, or the Son being with God, or the Son preaching the gospel. The Greek word that is most commonly used for Son, and Jesus uses it all the time when he refers to himself as the Son of Man, is a Greek word that is and some people pronounce it differently because it's a dead language. We don't really know how, know how it's pronounced. It's either pronounced weos, which is how I pronounce it, or I heard a guy in a video the other day pronouncing it uios. Whatever, it's the same word. It's spelled the same way. I understood exactly what the guy was talking about. That word means son. That word is not in the original Greek, but it is in the Joseph Smith translation. The other word that is not in the first verse of John in the Greek is the word for gospel, which is in the Mormon translation. And it is a word that's uh, euangelion. And it just basically means good news, or we sometimes translate it in English as the gospel. And it's where we get, with a little tweaking, we get the words evangelism or evangelical. Those are forms of the word euangelion. Um, if you change the U sound in euangelion to a V, kind of Latinize it, see how you could go from euangelion to evangelism. Um, that word is not in John in the text in the first verse. It's just not. So he's changed the meaning of those two passages, Romans and, and uh, John. And there are places where he's changed the Old Testament as well. He has added I can't remember off the top of my head, but somewhere around 12 verses to the end of the Old Testament, he wrote into the end of Genesis a prophecy of him. Joseph Smith Jr. wrote himself into the Old Testament, into the book of Genesis. And there is... Those three are just examples that I can tell you off the top of my head. If I was to do some research and do an in-depth video, but I don't want this to be about Mormonism. This is about different Bible translations. So those are the four that I would really stay away from. Uh, the Passion Translation, the Mirror Bible, the New World Translation, and the Mormon version of the King James or the Joseph transmission, Joseph Smith translation, it can be called either one. So back to the original question: Which Bible is the best? And the answer is going to be the best Bible for you is first and foremost the one that you will read. If you don't read it, it doesn't do you any good. I wouldn't recommend the King James if you're not going to read it, okay? Um, and then after picking a Bible that you would read, pick a Bible based on what you're going to use it for. If it's for everyday reading and you're not a Bible nerd like I am, then you might want to read the NIV or the CSB. If you're a Bible nerd, you might want the NASB or the ESV, or maybe even the NET is kind of somewhere in between, between those, but it's really good because it has footnotes about all the different uh, Greek manuscripts. So if you're a Bible nerd, I highly recommend a copy of the NET, the New English Translation, or the Net Bible, it sometimes gets called. Um, 
with all the footnotes. You can get it with it with and without the footnotes. Get it with the footnotes. If you're just looking for light devotional reading in the morning, the New Living Translation is fine. I'm not a big fan of the message. I've got a copy of it. I think it, it's a little too loose in a lot of places, but I don't see anything incredibly harmful or theologically wrong in it. It's just not all that great a translation. So when you decide which Bible is the best, you need to decide, you need to think about how you're going to use that Bible and whether or not you'll actually read it.